What's up guys, Axis here, back with the second day in the uh, seven part series of modeling week. And today we're going to be looking at this kind of successor to the day one model, which is basically just uh, adapting on top of the kind of techniques that we've already learned uh, with this kind of power hub thing. I didn't really spend that long uh, making this. You can make it look a lot better by uh, creating individual uh, sections for the kind of levels so they don't intersect like this but I mean uh, if you're looking to do something like this then this is really the best way to get started because it's not very that uh, really that difficult and um, maybe some of these techniques will help you out and speed up your workflow. So if we just do Control N or Command N we can go into a new Cinema 4D document and then what we're going to do is we're going to go and get a cylinder I'm going to go to Object, turn on the radius a bit higher, turn up the height. There we go. And I'm going to put on fill it to one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another cylinder. I'm going to put their orientation to Z or Z minus. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to turn down the radius slightly. And I'm going to put this inside an array. How we're going to do is we're going to hold Alt and then click Array. Scale down the uh, the radius of the array. I'm going to also scale down the radius slightly of the cylinder itself. And then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go into fill it, switch this to 2. Uh, and then we're going to put this inside a cloner by holding Alt and make sure you're selecting the array when you're doing this. And then go to grid array. And then from here we're going to put the X count to 1, the Y count to 3 and the Z count to 1. And as you can see that's properly spaced out, it looks pretty nice. I'm also going to turn down the radius again. So there we go. Uh, and yeah, that looks decent. And then what we're going to do, we're going to put this first cylinder, which I'm going to call base, and I'm going to put it in a bool by holding Alt. And then I'm going to create a duplicate of this, calling it copy. And I'm going to drag the original one inside the bull but underneath the base not as a child of the base but as a child of the bull so from here as you can see we've got these weird um i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna hide this object as well by the way um in fact i don't like how big the radius is on these so i'm gonna select both of these and turn down the radius there we go as you can see we've got this weird polygon a segment thing going on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up the rotation segments. This will speed up your render time as well so if you don't want the render time to be too long you can easily kind of uh, zoom out and away from the object and you won't see the the kind of fragmenting that much. So uh, from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this edit all by clicking C on the bull, right clicking uh, select children, click C again, right click and connect objects and delete. And as you can see that object has now become one. And we're going to hide this bool, unhide the cloner, open the cloner up and then we're going to uncheck both the cloner and the array. And from here what we're going to do is we're going to go in caps, uncheck fill it and we're going to turn down the height. Like that. And now what we can do is we're going to uh, rotate around this click C, go into the edge selection tool and if we click on one of these edges you can select one, if you double click you select all of them or you can go select loop selection tool and we can select all of these like that. Now we're going to go into the move tool and then while holding command or control we're going to drag out on the Z click T for the scale tool I'm going to drag this in and then I'm going to hold command or control and drag in on the z-axis like so. So that's our little inner object. I might want to also drag this back a bit so I'm going to double click here and go like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on both the cloner and the array once again. And as you can see, these are facing the correct way. That's why I rotated around the object in the first place. And then what we can do is we can turn down the radius of the array until they're inside the object. 
like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start on the wires. So if we go here onto the uh, the kind of other views, we can go into the front view. I'm just going to have this um, along with all the other grids because I can't be bothered clicking into it. So I'm going to go Bezier. I'm going to click on the middle one, and then I'm going to hold, click and hold for to do a kind of uh, what do you call it, like an uh, a soft interpolation thingy. And then we're going to go up here. We're going to hold again. Just angle this correctly so the movement kind of looks natural. So there we go. We've got that all going into there. Uh, we might have to adjust the the angle a bit as well, but I think it should be fine. Uh, for the time being. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put this inside a sweep by holding Alt while uh, having this plane selected. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do Control A or uh, Control N or Control uh, or Command N. And then we are going to go into the front view of this, and we're going to get a circle. It doesn't matter how big it is because we can rescale all these uh, in the next part uh, or when we go back to the other composition. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to make sure we've got the move tool selected and we're going to command or control drag and we're just going to scale these randomly. doesn't matter where they go, it just has to be random. So yeah, I'm just going to do this real quick. You can make it a bit more precise than I have if you want. And now that we've got all these, what we're going to do is we're going to click here and do Command or Control A, or we can select all these with the box selection. And then we're going to click C to make all of these editable. Right click on all of them, make sure they're all still selected and do Connect Objects and Delete. And from here we're going to click here and we're going to do Control or Command A, C, sorry. No, I keep saying A. Uh, and from there we can go into a Window and then our previous uh, composition thingy and then we're going to paste this in and then we are going to drag this as a child of the sweep but make sure it's above the spline as you can see we've got a massive uh, massive spline here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scale this down with the scale tool with T so I'm just going to scale it to the right height uh, like that And I'm going to go into the coordinates and drag this up on the Z. And I'm also going to increase the size of this again. And now we're going to click into the spline, go to object, go to uh, intermediate points and go to natural. And then from here I'm going to up this to 50. You can up, uh, up it further if you want to do more rotations, but I'm just going to do a few. Uh, and if we click on the sweep, you can see we've got this end rotation uh, option. And this will basically twist all the uh, all the cables together, which looks really cool. And as you can see, uh, if we wanted to add more spline points, it would look up a lot better. But I'm only doing uh, quite a, a small angle, so I mean, that looks pretty good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate again this uh, old cloner copy with con Control C and Control V, and we are going to drag this sweep into here while deleting this uh, cylinder that we have in here. I'm going to turn the radius to zero and I'm also going to click on the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, cloner and I'm going to go to render in instances and we're going to click it on and basically this will, uh, long story short, it will kind of give pointers to the object, it won't render each one individually um, so it will actually be a lot quicker to render and move about the scene. So if I move this up again, all of these are pretty matched up, but we can actually rotate these slightly if you've, you've got any problems with this. So we can go to the X rotation and we'll rotate these around the object. And now we've just got the finishing touches to go. I'm just going to get a tube object and drag this down. Scale it down to the size of, uh, well, just slightly smaller than the big cylinder object that we have here. I'm going to go into object, I'm going to turn up inner radius, and then I'm going to click on fill it, and we're going to go one on that. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to hold control 
or command while scaling down like that and I'm going to drag this down and I'm going to go into the object and turn up the height and now from here all we have to do is create a torus and drag this down scale it down again with the T uh, shortcut and I'm going to go into the pipe radius turn it down slightly so it's like that okay that looks decent yeah and basically what I do with this torus is I'd make it a glow or I'd make it like a light emitter and that would basically be everything so yeah thanks for watching guys remember to check out day one should be in the card section in the top right uh, leave a like if you enjoyed and remember to check back tomorrow for the third day of modeling week thanks for watching